today's video is, I just feel like recently, um, at least in the world of guns, uh, I've been buying a lot of stuff um, that I want to share with you guys because you guys really seem to uh, enjoy any time I make a gun purchase or anything like that. Um, definitely got some goofy stuff today. I'm just going to get right into it. I originally saw this gun in particular on uh, Demolition Ranch's channel, and that was one of the things I was telling, um, I was talking to my gunsmith about the other day when I bought this, um, I said like, I, you know, I have enough concealed carry guns, home defense guns, I have enough stuff like that, um, but I'm really trying to branch out into the goofy um, you know, different calibers, different goofy guns, just stuff for fun. And, um, one of the things he was telling me about was, um, he says he has this gun as well. And anytime he takes someone new to the range, you know, he says he brings out some, like, SPRs. He'll bring out all kinds of, like, rifles and pistols and stuff like that. And he said this is the one that gets a lot of attention and he's not sure really why. So the gun in question here is the Eltor. So also known as like the hot glue gun because uh, it looks a lot like one. This is an extremely goofy and extremely weird gun. Um, it's single shot um, so this one in particular comes in 380, and he said he has fired both the 380 and the 9mm, and he's saying out of this little tiny gun, um, 9mm is very unruly, so he recommended doing a 380. He said it's pretty pleasant. It actually has some, I don't know if you can see, some decent sights, and I use the word decent very liberally. Um, how to operate this thing is you actually have to pull back on this trigger to twist the barrel. If I can do it correctly and then the barrel pops off, you would slide your 380 shell just down into there and then you try not to be too crazy loud, would slide the barrel back on. And there's really no, like, for a lot of triggers, there's like a break point when the trigger actually goes off. This doesn't have that. You actually just pull back, and then you just let go of it, and it'll slap itself forward. The best way I can, I don't know how well I could show it to you, the firing pin just kind of sticks out there, and when you just let go of the trigger, it will uh, fire. Another thing that didn't take me very long to notice is that, again, to take off the barrel, you have to pull back on the trigger. So theoretically, when you go to fire it, your barrel is is loose, which I don't really like that. I mean, I guess I guess you're pulling the trigger pretty quickly, so it should just it should fire before you have any troubles. But I picked this thing up. Um, he actually cut me a really good deal on it. It was, he, he gets a lot of guns that are, um, someone buys them, shoots like one mag through them or whatever, and then returns it because they'd rather have something else. This was shot like a literal handful of times, um, and then returned. Brand new, they're like $110, um. And this this one only cost me seventy five bucks, and he originally wanted eighty, and I said, "Would you take seventy five for it?" He said, "Absolutely." So, I I couldn't let something like this walk off. It is just it's small, it's goofy, and I just absolutely love it. Um, just a fun little goofy single shot. Um, 
th this 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 fits me very well, to be honest. It's so it's just so small and goofy. Um, next up is uh, so I necessarily. Show you it's clear. Um, I have a couple Glocks now, and I have I have no problem with Glock. My only thing with them is like there's nothing wrong with Glock at all. It's a great gun, and any Glock I buy, fifty years from now, will, should still be working just fine. Um, my only thing with it is is. So I'm going to use this as the example. Um, the Glock 26 is very similar in size to this, and it holds 10 rounds of 9mm. And then there's this little dude, the 365. Um, if I can compare them. God. It is. It's the same length, um, or, what's that, what, uh, height, I guess? It's the same height, it is less length, and then it is smaller width-wise, and it also holds 10 rounds. Um, and even then, an extended mag for this is not that much further out than an extended mag for this big chunky boy. So what I'm getting at is, Glock does not really innovate, in my opinion. When guns are out here, um, they're getting smaller with even more capacity than this, and they are, um, they're in, they're just they're innovating better. So Glock, I have no problems with. I just wish they would. So the example I'll use actually is my 43X. Um, it stock magazine in it is a 10 rounder and then an aftermarket company came out with one that's the exact same length width and height it's the exact same dimensions and it holds 15 rounds but it's it's metal instead of polymer so it holds five more rounds in the same exact dimensions that is insane to me um, so I, I just wish Glock had more a little more innovation I'll use like the um, P320 SIG as an example. There's like the SIG P320, just the stock model. There's like the M18 and M17. There's the Legion. There's the AXG, um, the AXG Legion. Like, and they just keep getting better and better models. Um, and I just, I just wish Glock innovated a little more. All they're doing is they're saying, "Hey, here's a brand new Glock. We're making it a little longer." <laughs> But, anyhow, back to what this is. This is the Glock 27. It is chambered in 40 um, Smith & Wesson. I did not have a 40... Um, I didn't have a 40 cal before this gun. And even this little chunky dude is... It's only 9 rounds. Um... It's one of those cartridges that it's it's bigger than a nine mil, so it's less capacity. But like on the ballistic sense of things, it's not much different at all. It really isn't from nine mil. So you lo you go less capacity for around the same results. Um, this one here, why I picked it up, it's forty cal. Um, I didn't have a forty cal, so. That worked out pretty nicely. You know, just getting another caliber that I don't have. And I'm kind of ashamed that I have 50 BMG before I have a 40 or some of these calibers, but I'm trying to knock out some of the more basic calibers right now. Excuse me. This in particular was a police trade in. Um, and from what I was told, all police trade ins have night sights, which this one does have. It has the uh, true dot, true dot night sights. Um, so it does have some holster wear. I guess the 
police department turned in a couple of these to a local gun shop and uh, basically what they said was this was used uh, anytime there was an event at like the Capitol um, and what they would do is they would have plain clothes officers just in the crowd and this would be their carry piece that they would use um, when they were doing like when they were in the crowd just in plain clothes um, so this one is this one's a gen 4 does have a, this one has a decent amount of holster wear um, but it's really not that bad I only paid I only paid two hundred dollars for this, so again, in my opinion, that is a steal. Um, it's a Glock twenty seven Gen four, so for see, I don't even know how well it'll show up on camera. There's like a little bit of holster wear there around the front here, and then on top there's a little, but it's it's nothing crazy. Just a few little spots. I think brand new these are like five hundred dollars so mechanically there's nothing wrong with it just like I said a little bit of holster wear for three hundred dollars off I wasn't I'm not gonna pass that up and it's got the night sights which are probably like if I had to take a guess a hundred dollars um, so another little guy so my pinky of course doesn't fit um, but I just I just thought this was a neat little thing I picked both of these up at the same time um, for, for 200 bucks, I just, I wasn't going to walk away from something like that. Um, all right, I guess next up, I'm going to dive into this bad boy. This in particular was a, a DeSantis holster. I don't know if they still make, I don't believe they make these anymore. So I would wear this like this, and then it even has this little strap I can put on my belt for extra support. Um, it doesn't really do it justice while I'm sitting, but you get the point. This right here is extremely large shoulder holster. You might be able to guess the absurd gun that fits it. Show you we are clear. I try to I try to show you guys that I I am safe with my firearms. Um this is my 500 Smith & Wesson. Um, he had... This one I've had for years now. Um, I, lo I love this gun. In some ways, it's just the sheer power it puts off. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful gun. Um, he had the... I think it's a 4 or 5 inch version. He had it at the gun shop and it just... Oh my gosh, it looks incredible. But, um, I just, I like the full size. I think it looks beautiful. Um, just kind of a timeless piece at this point, I feel like. But, and again, it's kind of weird. Maybe I can... Not to be too loud when I stand up from this chair, but I know this chair likes to creak. Yeah, maybe that's not too bad. Hopefully that wasn't too loud, but this is uh this is what you get. And then this is that would attach to your um, your belt if you had one. But this is the uh, shoulder holster. I'm praying that's not too loud, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, it's here. 
here's one of them. I'll just take it off for a second. It's got this um, really thick shoulder strap, which is very comfortable. And uh, that's sort of what you get. So this was a trade-in. Again, I like gun stuff, so in my opinion, it, really there's no reason to sell things. Not, so like, I'll use this Altor as the example. Um, let's say I shoot this and I don't like it. Um, I just I think it's impractical or whatever. It's stupid. I'm not going to go back to the gun store and he'll probably offer me 40 maybe 50 bucks so in my opinion it's not worth taking a loss on something um, so I'd rather just keep the gun and maybe somebody else who hasn't shot it yet can take it out and see if they like it or something I just had a root beer so excuse my uh, my burping so this was um, another one it was it's a beautiful Smith & Wesson like I said, it's the, what is it, DeSantis. It's a beautiful holster, but the guy bought it. I'm assuming he was hunting with his 500. Um, and sold it to my local gun shop. Typically, these are $200 brand new, but again, I don't believe they make them anymore. So we negotiated down to 100 bucks because I'm telling, telling you this thing is in pristine condition. It looks like, in my opinion, there's one little scratch on the front here. In my opinion, the guy took it out, either didn't like the 500 or didn't like the holster, I don't know. And, I mean, this thing is still very rigid, very beautiful leather. What am I going to do with it? Beats me. I'll probably shoot it a couple... I don't hunt with my 500, so maybe I could wear this to the range as a silly, pretend I'm a cowboy or something. Um, but it's a beautiful holster, and I think, especially since I don't make them anymore, it's best to just kind of grab this up now while I have it. But, no, I mean, this thing is, it's quite something. Um, next up. Pretty sure I've shown this on the channel before, um, but in case I haven't, this is my uh, Romanian PSL. Um, it okay. So technically, this looks like a Dragon Off. Um, however, it's more of a Dragon Off clone. It's not actually. They, this one's PSL, is what they call it. Um, now the cool thing about this one in particular is that it was made um, in 1975 and if you actually do your research on it, these were this one in particular was actually made in Romania uh, and it's a true Romanian import into America. Um, I think it's Century, yeah, Century Arms um, does the importing. But this is a true Romanian built, I believe modern day, the research I used to do on it, um, the modern day ones of these, only like some parts are made in Romania, and then they just kind of ship like a couple parts over, they're not really truly Romanian, this one is, because it's one of the first ones of the PSL that they did. Um, beautiful rifle. only problem, so my problem was, I had a couple round boxes of uh, tool ammo, and what I'm guessing is that this, so a little bit before the Delaware assault weapons ban, um, I bought this. I took a lot of money from my savings and bought a lot of guns, um, and that, it's one of the shameful things, um, 
about the ban is that I didn't order this or anything. Someone just came in and traded it. So this was just on the wall. You could just pick it up, touch it, play with it, buy it. This was just on the wall. And uh, it's a shame because now that the ban's passed, you know, there's a, there's a lot less cool stuff out there. It was, I think it was like a couple days before the ban. This was on the wall. There was an MP5 on the wall. Um, my brother bought a P90, an FN P90, and then I bought this gun and my AK-74. Um, a lot of money was spent, like, the weeks prior to the ban, but um, I just remember this was just on the wall. And now the only thing that's on the wall of cool guns is, um, like, some fancy shotguns. It, it's kind of depressing. Um, but my point is, um, the tool ammo that I have, I didn't get a whole lot of it, and I've only shot this gun a handful of times. I'm assuming from what happened with this was that, um, someone bought it back in 1975, shot it, and again, this, this is in very good condition for being almost a 50-year-old rifle. Um, extremely good condition. And uh, the way you can tell, the cool thing about these rifles is the way you can tell the year is there's a dash at the end of the serial number, 75. And then same, the optic has a uh, serial number as well for dash 75. Um, so it's a really cool feature. I said that about my, uh, my Zestava that I just bought, is it's stamped on the gun, um, December of 84, so I know the month and the year it was made, I don't know why all guns don't just do that, but, um, I'm assuming with this, especially the condition it's in, and, um, I'm assuming it was bought, shot a few times, and then it sat on a, in a gun safe for the last 40 years or so, um, and what I mean by that is, I shot it twice now, on two different occasions, and I sprayed the crap out of it with, um, um, crap, what's the gun cleaner we have? I don't remember the gun cleaner's name. It'll come to me, but, and it's still, so occasionally with the mag in, it will lock up to the rear, so I have to actually remove the mag and then, like, jiggle it forward, um, but, the point of me showing you this, is that uh, the, pr the price for 7.62x54R is around 60 cents around right now. And my local gun shop, I think they had a spam cam that they just opened recently. But they have these guys. This, To the best of my research that I did, it is a 1970s Russian ammo from a spam cam, and then the steel tip on it means that there's a, uh, like a lead core in, or a piece of, it was a steel core, excuse me, there's a piece of steel in the, in the bullet here. Um, I bought 250 rounds of this crap. I'm hoping it works, but, um, I think... I can finally shoot this gun, get it dialed in and everything. Um, I don't want to move the big box of ammo. I know that's going to be loud as heck, but he had a whole mess of ammo for it. So this boy can finally get some love that it truly deserves. I, uh, I definitely have not shot what this thing is worth yet or what I even paid for it. Um, my all time favorite thing. Depending on, it's probably not going to show up on camera very well, but uh, one of the dials um, for up and down, one of them is Joss and the other one is Sus. I always find that funny anytime I look at this gun. Um, but I have a whole mess of ammo for it now, so hopefully she can uh, 
Let's see some sunlight get the love she deserves. But um, I know I've done a lot of gun rambles recently, and I promise there's some more content coming. I uh, I have some comments about a green screen, and I think it's a uh, it's probably time for me to start looking into that. Let me know if you guys know of any green screens that are, uh, excuse me, good. And, I mean, I don't have an unlimited budget, but I can spend probably like 100, 200 bucks on it. Um, I want something that's good, not like crazy expensive. I want something that's good. Um, and at the same time, very reasonably priced for being good, um, if that makes any sense. So I'm, I'm willing to shell out like 100, 200 bucks, like I said. Um, but I don't know much about green screens, but um, I had a comment like a long time ago now that they wanted me to do like a, a school bus role play where like I'll just joke around and stuff like that, like we used to on a school bus and. I've tried, like, mimicking my room and manipulating the camera and everything to look like I'm on a school bus, but it just, it does not look good. So, I think for a lot of video ideas that I have, um, a green screen would be a smart, it would be a smart idea. Um, so let me know if you guys have any knowledge of green screens, which ones I should get, what I should do with it, um, but I think... I think that's a good logical step. Um, also, I am coming up on a thousand subscribers now, which is blowing my mind, honestly. Um, I just, I'm very thankful that you guys are enjoying the content so much, um, because I absolutely love making these kinds of videos and just all types of content. I, am, I love it so much. You guys, doing something you love and then seeing other people love it too is just, it's incredible. I, I just, I can't thank you guys enough. I really can't. Um, like, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. Um, yeah, you guys mean the world to me. Um, so I'm thinking... Let me know your thoughts on this as well. I'm thinking of doing a new, fresh... Um, one hour of ASMR card magic. Uh, for one, one hour of ASMR card magic for a thousand subscribers. Um... Or I could even do, I mean, they're probably going to do an hour, or I could do, like, maybe 30 minutes of new stuff, and then have, like, all my old clips, so it'll probably be, like, three, four hours worth of ASMR card magic, but some of it'll be, like, older stuff. Um, but let me know. I want to do something special for you guys on a 1,000, because, like I said, it's a, uh, it's an accomplishment I didn't really think I was going to make, but, I mean, you guys are the absolute best, and, uh, I want to keep this channel going for you guys, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can just, we can keep going, because I just, like I said, I absolutely love making this stuff. So on that note, um, I'm going to end the video. Like I said, I'm going to, I've just been doing a lot of gun rambles recently, because I just keep getting a bunch of new stuff, but, uh, Hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.